Did I do this right? Oh, that's right. I have to do this. There we go. Mic in. Okay. Zoom. There, that's good. In the Garden of Eden, honey, I know that you'll always be true. In the Garden of Eden, honey. I know our love will go through. Oh. oh, wow, this is on. Um, hello? Hi, and welcome again to the Hobo and, and his girlfriend wrestling show. I am the one and only Hobo Tom. And let's get a couple things straightened up first. I've been working all day here, so you can tell I'm a little on the scruffy side. I'm a little on the hobo side. And I have to apologize to a whole bunch of people. I was working 12 hours at one job, 8 hours at another, and I forgot to make a thank you gift. And when I was taking a look at the whole list of people whom I have to thank, um, instead of replaying everything in one show, which is, yeah. R really, really, really hobo-ish. I'm going to break this up. And UDM MI-9, you're going to get the new one just because I still have to make that. And that takes processing stuff. Um, the first thing I'd like to say, I'd like to thank everyone. And I'm going to give a whole list of names. First, because I think that's the fairest thing, and then I'll get into some specifics. The Donnie Murdoch, Wrestling Fan 01, Big Sex A, David Barlow, The Cination Dog, Crix Davis. I do apologize if I get anyone's name wrong. Again, you tried reading this, and you'll see. From Jonathan Panetta, John Harrington, again, UDM MI6-9, Slicks, Slicks is back, that's always good to see him, uh, Pistachio, BB67, Rocky, I think, I try, Ixie Queez, See here. And hat brar and a g. I like to thank all of you for commenting on Impact Rebellion. That's a live stream I did last night. Thank you, everyone. And now I want to get into some very specific shoutouts and video dedications. So this is probably going to be a long part of the video. And again, I'm sorry I do not have enough videos to get everyone in one show. So those of you who don't get mentioned this show, I also do a Tuesday show or Wednesday morning show. Depends when I get to put it up. Depends on my sleep and work. So Donnie Murdoch, you get the air, air drums.
Wrestling Fan 01, the six count goes out to you. Big sexy. Get this dirty pen. And David Barlow, you are now an honorary member of the El Generico Band. Oh, wait, I can do one. I just realized that, too. Okay. Uh, let's see her. The Cena Nation dog. Holy shit. Rick Davis, this is Mundo Madness, Ooh, yeah!
Charlotte Harrington. This. Oh my. G moment. Goes out to you. Did you meow? Oh, my cat just walked on by. One day she'll, she'll get back on YouTube. And then UDM MI6-9. This exhibition goes out to you. Jonathan Penta, you're my tag team partner. Well, that's good. And then everyone else, Slicks is getting one. Pistachios, BB67 is getting one. Um, Ixy Queez is getting one. Anat Brar is getting one. And AG. Unfortunately, I'm going to be sending all those out on my YouTube channel tomorrow. But again, I'd like to thank everyone who commented. I'd like to thank all 300 and. Well, I guess I know. I know. I, I could have set like a one day record for me. I think there was like 380 some odd views within like a 24 hour time span, probably. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone. That was probably my most successful live stream ever. Again, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Thank you guys very much because without you guys, there'd be no place for Hobo Tom. With all that, again, I can't say how much I appreciate that. Um, another news and note, I actually picked, I think, four out of the six matches. It's right there on the top. I have four out of six on my prediction because I predicted that Ty Val oh, wait. Yeah, Ty Val Valkyrie would win. I predicted LEX in Match of the Night. I predicted Rich Swan. And then I predicted there would be some mystery unlisted match. So that's four out of two, three, four, five, six. So if Stephanie worked, Stephanie McMahon does work for Impact as a side. Indeed. I would definitely be in Stephanie McMahon's head. And that was Impact. Again, I'm going to keep an eye on Impact because actually it was a really fun card. Again, you can go back to my video archives and, and check it out. Um, again, I do apologize. I can only play the volume at certain times. I don't want to get copyright violated. I do a horrible rendition of Butterfly. So that's not even a concern. Um, some other news and notes of significance.
is that tomorrow is going to be, again, the typical SmackDown. And then Sunday, it's Cinco de Mayo. And we're having a guest host. And everyone I know hates him. He's the, the, the fattest rat in all of Costa, Costa, Costa Nicaragua. But uh, El Vagabundo Dos Hobo Cinco Trace number three is going to show up. And he's going to host Cinco Mania! And that's going to be on Sunday where you get to see some, some part of the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League Wrestling. Again, on that card. Sometimes we have some guest WWE appearances. Again, the good thing about Florida is that there's no state income tax. So every so often, someone from WWE will show up. Generally, it's people from the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. I know uh, scheduled on the card, you shall see the current Under the Bridge champion, Diamondback Jack Maverick. You shall see the always underweight champion, Aiden Awesome. We see some cops from Chikara. It's going to be El Drunko. There's always a gimmick wrestler. That could be on Cinco de Mayo. And the ladies always make a pretty good showing for themselves. And there's always some crazy match. And there's hobos involved. You know, there has to be a, a, a hobo street fight somewhere. So again, that's going to be on Sunday. Uh, so that, again, is part of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. You can see what the fans here in Daytona Beach look like. Again, there's a police carrier on the beach. I mean, the ring's made out of garbage. There's a broken windshield on top of the announce table. Like, beat up soccer balls for from buckle pads. I mean, the, the ring's covered in, in cardboard, brown butcher paper. And the ropes are actual real ropes with no tape on them. The all natural. That's Cinco de Mayo. That's coming up Sunday. But let's get to some Monday Night Raw. And this show, it's it, it was entertaining. Not the best show, but just enough to keep a smile on my face. And to keep at least me tuned into it for a while. And I always miss some little segments. I should get that ham sandwich. There's nothing um, looking at things. There's nothing horrible. With that being said, there's nothing that great. It's kind of an average middle of the run. And it's weird because they're doing a lot of, like, they're acting like this is, like, a couple of weeks out from pay-per-view, which I go, oh, it's about three weeks out. Because it's the next Money in the Bank's May 19th. And again, I'll be doing, hopefully, a live stream. That depends a lot more on work. I know in May, I just a pile of money and swimming swimming dollar bills like Scrooge McDuck. So I really shouldn't complain about that. But let's get to some Monday Night Raw. So again, like the, again, I can't thank you guys enough. And to that second half of the list, don't worry, you're gonna get something tomorrow. I mentioned everyone's name again. Thank you guys very much. I'm not worthy. Because you guys actually make the show a lot more interesting and it's so goes, goes by so much quicker when I can interact with people. And I think that's like the way things go. And for the most part, I think everyone, and this holds true for wrestling fans in general, unless you're that wrestling fan. You know who I'm talking about. And if you don't, you're it. But for the most part, wrestling fans, they're, they're really friendly people. And they'll talk about wrestling. 
it's all opinion stuff. I mean, um, again, you get that one fan. Oh, he's the greatest technical wrestler of all time. Yes, this, 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 this. It's like, oh, the Macho Man's a bum. Oh, he couldn't do anything. All he could do is talk. Ooh, man, yeah, funny voice. You loser. How dare you make fun of the Macho Man? Ooh, yeah. I don't know. I think that wrestling fan is not going to get a handshake. He's going to get slapped across the face. Yeah. I digress with this. Now I do need to get into Raw. So Alexa Bliss comes out. Um, it's a moment of bliss with the four competitors for the men's money in the bank. And I'm hearing rumors there's going to be an NXT only money in the bank match, which should be interesting. But for right now, um, again, the, just the four competitors from Raw. I think there's six or seven in total. So you want to say there's going to be two or three coming from SmackDown. I'll find that tomorrow. So we have Braun Strowman enters the ring first. Ricochet. Jeez, Ricochet looks tiny. Uh, Drew McIntyre and, and Baron Corbin. Drew just yells at people. Kind of cool because Baron Corbin, he says, this, is, this could be a two-time Money in the Bank champion. Not happening. I think Drew's gonna. I think Drew's gonna take it. Only heels really should have the money in the bank. I don't think there's ever been a good face money in the bank for a while. Maybe going back to Edge could be considered a face. Again, it goes back a while. Maybe Jack Swagger was one. Yeah, he wasn't very good, though. Or he didn't... He's probably very good. They just botched him up. So this starts off with a match. Um, again, they just yell at Ricochet. It's like, like, listen, little boy. Drew can call people little boy. And it comes off with a little stank on it. That's good. Then he yells at Barry. He's like, shut up. You haven't, he's right. You, you haven't done nothing. So shut your yap hole. Braun's like, well, I'm the monster among men. I can't do a Braun voice. But he's the monster among men. So it starts off again. You have the, the heels versus face. Ricochet and Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin Drew McIntyre. Braun's awesome. I mean, <laughs> he just looks so much bigger than Ricochet. And Ricochet... So tiny compared to those other three individuals. There's a lot of beef in the room. Oh, uh, the crowd was chanting uh, when Rick Ricochet got in, Ricochet, Ricochet. And whenever I see a sign out there that makes me chuckle, you know I'm going to mention it because whoever had to listen up, I want a hug from the man. Listen, I could use a hug from the man. I just hope the man they're referring to is Becky Lynch. I'm still kind of upset that I missed my chance to get Candice LeRae's autograph at Sanford NXT and that she didn't show up to the Daytona Beach. Jeez, they hate Daytona Beach. Yeah, they must think it actually is a Daytona Beach bum fight league. <laughs> I'll have to mention that to, to Matt later. Um, Braun Jeremy cleans house. Again, they're trying to take Braun up first. He starts in and tags in Ricochet. Ricochet, he, Ricochet is just there to do flippy, flippy stuff, and his flippy, flippy stuff is amazing. For the most part, Drew just gets in the ring, then he just starts beating Ricochet. And that makes sense. Drew's obviously a much larger, beefier Scottish brute. Um, he just gets, uh, he just starts tossing Ricochet around. Eventually, again, Ricochet does do his flippy stuff, which is great. Um, then Baron, of course, gets in there. Um, on the outside, Braun chases Baron, because Baron just has to taunt people. Baron Corbin, you have to learn a lesson from Dutch Mantel. Do not poke that bear. Great story, and that was on Viceland. And I know, actually, 
I was watching Viceland, and they did the Bruiser Brody special. Excellent. I highly recommend that. Um, Bruiser Brody could give me a hug, though. That'd be cool. Difficult, but it would be cool. Um, eventually, again, Braun starts chasing Corbin, but Corbin's smart. He, he leads him right into Drew McIntyre. Um, he hits him with a Claymore. It's so going to eventually, for the most part, it's going to be a, a two-on-one. And Braun does get the Braun does recover and gets a hot tag twice, which is pretty cool. And OMG, Ricochet did a shooting star press. And I swear, it's a shooting star. You have to jump up, backflip, land on this person. So you need to get some height. The height he gets, it's unnatural. I mean, that's amazing. Here's like, How does people do that? Um, this is kind of predictable, though. Overall, it was a good match. Again, it's hard to screw up a match of this quality. And if you can't screw it up, that's a good cheeseburger match. And then we get into the next match. Which is... The Usos, they come out talking, and they take on a club. The club have a great promo, and Carl Anderson, that they talk a little bit. How about, how, well, the, the good brothers. They're still the club. They're still bu 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 bullet club. For life. They're too sweet. And real. Oh, that's right. AJ Styles is on Raw, too. Oh, wow. I hope they do reunite AJ Styles with the club. That would be cool. We'll see what happens. Re reform the club. I just want to beat up John Cena. That was that was good. I enjoyed that. And again, they had, he had great matches, too. Um, so the Usos come out. Carl uh, Anderson, more to the point, just says that he's bulletproof. Oh, that's awesome. You know, no one wrote that line for him. He said, said well, just say, just say bullet point, bullet point. He's like, I'll say something bullet point. I'm bulletproof. That was awesome. And Gallows, again, he's the big man. He actually cleans house. I mean, Carl Anderson's just such a technical wrestler. The crowd, for, for the most part, looks actually really strong for most of the match. Um, again, they, they know how to... Uh, tag team isolation, really basic aspect of tag team wrestling. Um, Henderson spine buster is probably, I hate to say it, but it's probably the, the third greatest spine buster there is. Again, Arnie Anderson, best spine buster ever. Dean Malenko, second best spine buster. I mean, to be the third best spine buster, you, 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 have, to, you, have, you have to look at, at, at number one and two. So again, really good. And at this time, again, uh, the Uso, Jimmy makes a hot tag to, to Jay. Or does Jay get the hot tag to Jimmy? I wonder if Naomi really knows. I know one of them has stepkids. One of them has kids. Naomi is a stepmother. I just forget which. They both look the same. You need twin one and twin two tattooed on their forehead. Uno and dos. <laughs> invader one, invader two. Again, if you watch the Breezer Brody episode, you'll, you'll understand that, that reference of invader one. What was the invader two? I forget now. But this time, it's, it's Gallo's turn to eat the pin. There goes the club. 
the only sure, well, at least Anderson is bulletproof. Um, the Usos going to win again. Really hard to screw up a match like this. Another good cheeseburger match. And then the Usos show some backstage footage of the Revival shaving each other's back? Ooh! I don't want to see that! I wonder what, what Rousseauian idea from the Attitude Era did that come from? At least, like, Attitude Era, they would have, like, two women, like, soaping each other's Backward shampooing each other. Something sexy? Shaving back hair? Not sexy. Women shampooing each other's hair? Sexy. Again, just weird. When they come out, that's an invasion of privacy. It probably is. I mean, you're not supposed to videotape people in, in the restroom. That's, that's, a, that's a criminal offense, isn't it? I want to be a pro wrestler. There's so many crimes you can get away with. Then we have the most awesome show on all of WWE, Miz TV. He brings up Bobby Lashley. And I think this is setting up a feud with Lashley a little bit. Um, there's a match between the Miz and Lashley. Bobby Lashley says he's two-time IC champion. Miz is... Like six time IC champion, world heavyweight champion, tag multiple time and yeah, multiple time WWE and or world heavyweight champion. I think multiple time tag team champion. And I think he even held the US belt for a very short stint. The Miz has done everything. Lashley, not so much. Um, so then it sets up a match. Uh, the Miz and Lashley. Miz is strong. But Miz looks small, too, in comparison to Bobby Lashley. Um, again, he's a little bit he's quicker. He's more of the tactical wrestler. Whenever he does a move, that, that requires impact. And it makes sense. He starts. He, he gets a running start. Which makes sense. Um, then Shane comes out. And the good news is Miz is not Miz does not have Sethitis. He gets fully distracted. He does get distracted a little bit. But every time he just kind of looks over and, and Shane stops. But it's really quick. Um, eventually he does get fully distracted. He eats a spear from Bobby Lashley. It was okay. I, I mean, what was that ham sandwich? I mean, Shane kind of took away from the match. And then um, Bobby Lash, uh, Shane McMahon gets in the ring, just starts to beat up, beat up the Miz. Oh, um, Bobby Lash had a great line. So he's, like, he's like, yeah, and your baked potato head father? It's like your fully loaded baked potato. It was funny. He couldn't figure, he couldn't, it was like he couldn't remember the line, but he had the image in his head because, um, I think Shane called the Miz's dad a potato head. And actually, it must have just come from catering. It's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're a loaded baked potato head father. You could almost tell he, he kind of forgot the line, but he, he knew the image. And it was, it was actually better than just saying potato head dad. He can improvise. And it seemed... So natural, I guess. So, so that was really cool. And then it comes to the, the two on one. They just they just beat up the Miz, and, and that was kind of fun. again the match overall. Eh. We'll we'll see what WWE chooses to do. Then you have the Viking Raiders Roots versus Lucha House Party because they changed their name Viking Raiders. They're fully vested now into this Viking theme. I mean our our. I think I've seen this on YouTube, but are Vikings like the new zombies? Where everything was zombie everything, now is it Viking everything? 
I mean, the crowd still, they still make the chant crowd go war, 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 war. Cool. Um, for this match, Lucha House Party is smart. They know there's three Lucha House Party members, and there's only two War Raiders, so three is greater than two. So they decided to jump War Raiders before the start of this match. Pretty smart. If I had to fight the War Raiders, I'd Bring six other guys. A baseball bat, a sledgehammer, and I'd find that kendo stick they hide under the mat. That's what I think. Um, and Lucia House Party jump them. The good thing is this is a little bit more of a match than it was last week. I mean, they put up some offense for a little bit. They did jump the War Raiders. It just seemed to upset the War Raiders. Or Viking Raiders. I digress. But, I mean, for the most part, it was a pretty fun match. I mean, Lindsay Dorado eventually got... Uh, it was Grand Metal League and Kalisto with Lindsay Dorado on the outside. Eventually, Lindsay Dorado decides, after the match was over, to actually get involved with the match. Lindsay Dorado, not the smartest choice to make. So he gets, like, their... Second finish. I guess so. But again, for the most part, kind of ham sandwich. And probably just because he knew what the outcome was going to be. And then though, this, <laughs> this is getting better and better. It's a Bray Wyatt Firefly Funhouse segment. He's painting a picture. And he has this, this ratty old... Oh, I wonder... Oh, no. Allie's off to... Allie's off to AEW. She's taking on Brandy Rhodes at the pay-per-view in Jacksonville. So I was going to say, for, for a, th a third of a second, I thought... Allie, the, the the bunny rabbit from uh, Impact Wrestling, was going to make an appearance. They did have that bunny. I think it was funny. I heard men. <laughs> Bo Dallas should be the mailman. That's <laughs> and Curtis Axel will be the, be the train station engineer. I could see him do that. Um, but it was a picture of the house that of the shack that Randy Orton burned down, and it woke up Witch Abby or Abby the Witch again, a sister Abigail reference. Or, or is it Abigail? I think it's Abby the Witch, close enough to Abigail, though. So it'll be interesting because they really want Diana Parasso. She looks like a witch. Call her up. Let me boo her some more. Because Diana Parasso, you do not deserve to have Princess Kimberly's entrance. Do not do your bow like Princess Kimberly. You are not my princess, Kimberly. Ooh, Deanna Parazzo. She's getting, she's getting hobo heat now. That's a whole other issue, though. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo, Deanna Parazzo. Boo! But again, he, he hung it up. He Well, to get back to what I was talking about, he hung up the picture, talked to the rabbit. I know there was El Bunny and Luch Underground. All the rabbit tribes know it's kind of freaky. You never know. I'm sure they steal gimmicks from everyone eventually. So again, that was really fun though. That that made me chuckle. <laughs> again, it's a picture of the of, of the shack that Randy Orton burned down. That was kind of cool. 
Then we have um, Alexa, a moment of bliss. Um, so Alexa introduces. Well, I kind of got these two things backwards, but that's okay. I just thought the fun house was so much better than this. Well, it was uh, Natalia Neidhart, Dana Brooke. Those two start arguing with each other, and, and Alexa's like, like, I don't want your catty argument here. <laughs> Alexa, bless your footy. And then he came, comes out, challenges Alexa Bliss to a match. Alexa Bliss isn't even wrestling gear. So for like good part of the match, Alexa's trying to like untie and take off her shoes. Like she borrowed someone's shoes though. That's not sanitary. I hate that because she's kind of pretty looking, but for her to use someone else's shoes, it's like the one coworker. Always won. I think she, she had to get the dry spray shampoo because she let me know that she goes like three plus days without washing her hair. Listen, Listen. Take, a look at this. take a look at this. This gets washed, especially this stuff. It's washed it's at washed. least. I might go 22 hours without a shower and 22 hours without washing my hair with shampoo. That's like if I do absolutely nothing for a whole day and I can't make it to the gym. Yeah, that's like reserved for like Thanksgiving days. For weird days where you know you just sit around the house and don't do anything. It's like, well, I don't need to shower. I'll just shower after the gym. Start tomorrow. But not to wash your hair for like three days. Ugh. The sexiest thing a woman can do, ladies, to have shampooed scented hair. That's the best. Um and that's a hygiene thing. And there's always that that one person at work. I, I work with the guy that Bunk to high heaven once. I don't even think he showered. Um, so with this match, it's, it's kind of basic back and forth match. Um, eventually, Naomi <laughs> eventually pulls her shoes off. I think she rolls her up. Oh. It was a pinfall. I didn't even pay attention to the pin. I'm just like, who pooed this match? This was a can of soup. There's only one thing worse you can get in the can of scoop, and thankfully nothing like that happened. Um, then there was a promo with Ray Mysterio Jr. and his son Dominic. His son Dominic's a whole head taller than him. We'll get into that later as well. Um, Becky Lynch comes out for a promo. <laughs> they showed part, part of the... I love the camera, the, the pervy cameraman at WWE. They always show the wrong thing of the women. Because... Alicia Fox needs slightly tighter trunks. Because you could kind of see up it. Again, that, uh, the camera work. They definitely pulled Hobo Tom for that. No, what else? Um, she calls out Lacey, Lacey Evans. I, I don't dig that southern accent. I don't like much about the south besides the fishing. Weather during the winters. No, oh, I have the snow though. And during during August. Then we have So so of course they start a fight. There's Becky two belts chance and let them fight. Of course that's gonna happen. Then we have the revival versus Curtis Hawkins and Zach Ryder. Zach Ryder is actually really fun to watch. I'm actually shocked. Um Kurt Hawkins doesn't get in this match, I think. At all. Um, the Revival's so good. They're such a solid tag team. <laughs> the funny thing is, <laughs> the crowd is chanting, Shave his back. Shave his back. That was kind of funny. Um, they're just, I think the Revival's above that. Again, it was a fluky win. It was a roll up. I want to say, um, Zack Ryder was like a double noggin knocker between him and. 
Dash, I think. And Zack Ryder just kind of rolled him up. It was a fluky win. They're only going to get so much mileage out of that. Again, it's a can of soup. And then Sami Zayn does a promo again. You can all go to hell. That kind of sums it up. Then you have Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, Samoa Joe's amazing on the mic. I mean, he just runs down Rey. He runs down his son. That's awesome. I mean, Joe is so stiff looking. I'd be terrified to go in the ring against him. I'd be like, listen, I'm going to do this one thing. And then he can ragdoll me all over the place. Just don't or kick me. Um, Ray can still fly, though. I mean, that's that power slam. Ooh, that's tight and vicious. Um, Ray hit a standing 619. Um, it was pretty good, though. Uh, Ray won. And it was really a fun match. Um, eventually, Ray gets on his son Dominic's shoulders. And that was kind of impressive from, from Dominic. And it was a really fun cheeseburger match. And then the main event moment, we have the contract signing. And this kind of felt weird because it seemed, it still seems way too far out for me, but that's, that's what I know. Probably because WrestleMania was really early in April. And Money in the Bank's not until, like, the end of May-ish. So maybe that's why. It just feels like it's so long. But AJ Styles and Seth Rollins do that. I mean, it's going to be a fight eventually. Um, AJ Styles picks up the belt and says, yeah, I'll give it to you for now. And then AJ Styles, AJ throws the first punch after some taunting from Seth. And <laughs> Seth Rollins... You said the wrong thing to AJ Styles. Because AJ Styles can finish any match. Because AJ Styles finished you off with a phenomenal form. And that was Raw. Not a bad Raw. Not a great Raw. It had its moments and it was entertaining. Again, it all depends what you're looking for when you're watching pro wrestling. So again, I'd like to thank all of you. I already listed off all your names. That would take another five minutes to do. Because I still have a lot, I have a lot of editing to do. So, and those of you who I didn't mention, you'll you'll hear your name mentioned with your thank yous tomorrow. Bye. Bye.